good afternoon. So this is going to be a like a refresher video for students because these are all strategies that we've already learned for two-digit addition and have practiced numerous times in class. So this will be a refresher course for students, but an introductory video for parents. Um, some of you might be familiar with some of these strategies, but some of these strategies might be new to you. So I wanted to show you how to do all of these different strategies. So if your child is doing them, you understand what they are doing, how they are working out their problems. Or if your child is struggling a little bit with two-digit addition, you can provide some guidance um, in addition to what they have learned in class. So the first strategy I wanna talk about is of all of the strategies, this is the most concrete paper-based strategy. So even though they won't be using actual manipulatives in their hands to work out the addition problems, this provides a visual for them, which provides a little more um, concrete understanding for them. So say for example, I have the problem thirty-five plus twenty-six. They will draw the problem with quick tens. 35, 26, and they will simply count up the quick tens to find the total amount. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. There's another way to do the quick 10 strategy They will still draw the first number, but then they will draw the second number, adding the ones to the ones from the first number. Okay. What this does is it allows us to see if we are able to make a brand new 10. And if we are, we can connect them. And then when we count our total amount, it's easier to count because we have another 10 available. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I do have enough to make another 10, so I'm going to connect those. So now I'm going to count the total now that I have another 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61. I got the same answer, it was just a little bit quicker to count because I went ahead and created a new 10. The second strategy is my favorite, and I've told the students that this is my favorite. Had a little video snafu, I'm back. So this is my favorite. It's called tens, tens, ones, and ones. Okay, and when you see this strategy, it's a pretty quick strategy, which is why it's one of my favorites. Um, but this is also a really great way for students to start working towards that mental math because. When I work out the problem, you'll see how you're connecting tens together and ones together, which, help, which helps them attribute it to um, a mental understanding of it so they can do mental math. Okay, so I have 36 plus 25. I'm simply going to connect my tens and connect my ones. Tens, tens, ones, and ones. Once I do that, I know that 30 and 20 is 50, 6 and 5 is 11. All I do is add up those numbers, which are a lot easier to add because numbers are a lot easier to add to groups of tens than numbers with tens and ones and tens and ones. So 50 plus 11 equals 61. The next strategy is pretty much the same strategy, but it uses a little more math work to show the understanding. And when I work it out, you'll see what I mean. So tens, tens, ones, and ones. Equal. 
equations. So I still do the same thing. I'm going to connect my tens and tens, ones and ones, but then I'm going to work out my addition in equations so I can see the math work a little bit more clearly. So 30 plus 20 is 50. Five plus six is 11. And now I just add up those two totals. So you can see I did the same thing, but instead of just putting my tens and ones right here underneath my arrows, I wrote out their problems so I can see the answers. Okay, this next strategy is called friendly numbers. So on this, I'm going to try to use numbers that are friendly. We know that 10 and groups of 10 are friendly numbers because they are so easy to add. So on this equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first add 30 and 26. I'm going to take this five off just for now. I'm going to look just at my tens. So I'm going to do 30 plus 26. Now that's a lot easier to do than 35 plus 26 because groups of 10 are very easy to add to a number. So I know that 30 plus 26 is 56. Now I go back and I add my ones that I took off in the beginning. So 56 plus five. Now this is also a lot easier to add because now I just have to focus on my ones. This number does not have any tens. So all I have to do is add 56 and five more ones. And I get 61. This next strategy we call vertical math because we line the numbers up vertically. This is a strategy that a lot of students like because it's so quick for them to do, but I did explain to them that they have to be very careful and pay attention to their place value when they do vertical math. So when you do vertical math, you line up your numbers and you have to make sure that your ones place lines up and your tens place lines up. So I have my tens here and my ones here. When we do vertical math, we always start with the ones, not the tens. So I'm going to add five and six. Now when I add five and six, that number is greater than 10. I know that five plus six equals 11. Well, 11 has a 10 and a one. If I look at my place value chart, I cannot put tens and ones down here. This is the ones place. If I put the tens and the ones down here, and then I went and added my tens, I would get 511. And I know that's not the right answer because I already know that these are not going to add up to a number that large. So I know that something's wrong. So five and six equals 11. The only number from 11 that I'm allowed to put here is the ones place because this is the ones column. So I'm going to put my one, one, and then this one 10, I have to move to the tens place. That's where he belongs. He is not allowed to be in the ones place. So I'm going to take this 10 and I'm going to put him right here. 
Now I can add the total of my tens. I have my three tens and my two tens that I started with, so that's five tens. And then I have this extra one I created when I added my ones. So five plus one equals six. Vertical math. The last strategy is, of course, mental math. Now, mental math, of course, is a strategy you use once you are able to visualize the other strategies in your head. These are, this is a strategy that you're only allowed to use if you can see all of that math taking place inside of your brain already. I tell students that they are allowed to do mental math if they can see those strategies working inside their head, but if I check their work and they miss two or more, I do require them to go back and use a strategy so that they can work through the problems and then work towards mental math. Of course, this is the end goal. We want all students to be able to eventually look at two numbers and be able to mentally compute them, but until they get there, any of the strategies that I've demonstrated today are fine. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye.